Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rebound Basketball Show. Today, we've got a really, really nice episode coming up. I call this one the winner's circle. We've got, you know, myself, <laughs> Ray, a.k.a. the Bushman, on one winning team in D2, and we have one of the sharpest of shooters. This guy gives me hell every time I see him on the court. <laughs> Birmingham's finest, Martin Girl. What's good, man? How's it going, bro? You okay? I'm good, man. You know, I feel like a champion, you know? <laughs> no one's there. Yeah, it, feels, sure. it feels good. It feels good. It feels good. It feels real good, man. It feels good, you know? Yeah. I just want to talk, you know, when I have a little conversation, your break bread is, you know, winners. Obviously, you've won D2 North uh, mm-hmm. with uh, City of Birmingham, and I obviously did my thing with London Lee in uh, D2 South. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again, first of all, congratulations. I know a lot of guys on that team, you know, your Samuel Tolawasis and your Kane Kings and everything. So, you know, it's mm. nice to see some of my guys win. Um, but talk me through what the process was like this year. What was what was the team like this year? Um, to be honest with you, it's, it's been a good year. Um, apart from kind of all the trials and tribulations that any team would go through, but I feel like we went through a little bit more than normal, than we should have um, with uh, obviously our Portuguese coach, not being able to coach us this year because of visa issues and stuff like that. I think um, the, when we had to overcome that, it was it was an easy process in terms of coming over that because we all had a common goal. We all knew what we were there for. We all knew what we wanted to achieve. So it was kind of like it was a formality at the end of the day who who was going to coach us because we all had this, the same um, general mindset. So... Um, from the beginning, it was kind of good. We started off really early. We started our preseason, like probably June, July times after the trials that uh, Rockets held. Um, and then we just kind of got after it, to be honest with you. We were all in decent shape and we hit the ground running. So it was good, man. It was good. Yeah, I mean, you have a, like I, like I said, you have a collection of players, you know, guys that have, you know, been around the block before, you know, been around Division 2 and 1. They know what it takes to sort of get there, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I know you said you had some trials and tribulations, you know, it sucks that, you know, your coach wasn't around, your, the coach that was supposed to be around wasn't around and stuff. Ours was similar, but it was more sketchy. So um, we had our preseason was sort of crammed into a week. Um, uh, the coach, the guy was supposed to coach, we let him go. He got, we got rid of him because, you know, he wasn't, it wasn't his style of coaching wasn't conducive to the players that we had. Then he left, a lot of players left, and we had to sort of recruit quick. Uh, Daniel decided to be a player coach and had like three friendlies in a week and then the first game of the season. Mad. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, but like, I feel when that comes to trials and tribulations, but the team's just been so, so connected, you know, we came with the mindset like I did. A, I did. I did a preview show for the season, the start of the year, um, mm-hmm. with uh, three of the other guys from you know uh, Division Two South. And um, you know when I said that I feel like we could win the league, everyone sort of laughed, and I'm like, okay, cool, mm-hmm. don't worry, don't worry. And it was it was just nice to you know be able to sort of put them in their place and just mm-hmm. show show what London Elite's about, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, again, from the south looking up to the north. You guys have an amazing fan base. You guys are really building something special. And, you know, us in the South, we envy that because, you know, we don't have that kind of community, you know. Um, mm. There isn't as much, you know, basketball in Birmingham at the highest level. There aren't a lot of teams that people, t- as compared to London, there aren't as many teams, you know. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about that, you know, building the fan base and making your home court such a fortress. Uh, I, honestly, I feel you build it and then they will come. Um, the, the job that Kirk Dawes and Brad Palmer have done over the years, kind of building the club that that is now, um, started off with obviously the junior level, the grassroots, are, for me, the most important part of it, because as much as the end product looks good and it feels good and, you know, men's team want to be winning, if there's nothing coming through, then it's, it's kind of pointless, if I'm honest with you. So, um, it's kind of like there has to be a beginning and an end all the time. There has to be a balance in everything that you do in life. And I feel like the balance was done right way. A lot of clubs come into this and like, yeah, I need a men's team or we want a men's team or a women's team 
And it's kind of like, well, wait, what foundation are you building this off? And I feel like the foundation is one of the most important things. Um, so, yeah, that was a good thing that that's happened over the city over the years. Don't get me wrong. There's been politics yeah. for many, many yeah. years. You know what I mean? Like there is up and down the country, people thinking that they can do a better job or wanting to do a better job. And I feel like it's it, everyone's heart's in the right place. But it, there's, 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 there's a kind of a balance between your heart and your actual mindset and your, your actual approach. like yeah, yeah. And actually making sure that you're doing everything for the right reasons and you have the right things in place to to make that work because it's all well and good having the heart but if it doesn't make sense uh economically or, or financially then it's not going to work and it's not going it's not sustainable mm. so um as a as a club they've done amazing things through the city um with one of the biggest clubs in terms of participation for juniors and now obviously we have a a, a team in kind of the, the, the semi pro level pro level in the country so there's something that we can have these kids aspire to and if they want to go further they can if they don't they can play so i think that was the most important part of getting it right I feel like you guys really capitalized on the pull from, you know, the summer, um, you know, with the Commonwealth Games, gold, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. guys, and, you know, you guys, like you said, you know, participation has gone through the roof with the, with the grassroots and everything. And it's, you know, it's, it, like when I, when I see highlights of your games and things, I, I'm envious, you know, every, all of the, all of the kids want to come and see the games. They all want to take pictures. They all want to be involved with the team mm-hmm. and that kind of culture you've sort of built something that's sustainable at the semi-pro mm. and pro level you know and Mm-mm. you know again a lot of the teams in the south bar maybe um brighton who have mm-hmm. a really really good fan base themselves um we envy you guys you know yeah. we really do you know watching how noisy it is in your games um even looking at the worcester worcester wolves games packed house mm-hmm. yeah and, you know, I really, we really envy that. So, you know, I have to commend you guys up north for doing what you're doing, you know. Um, Absolutely. But talk to me about the players, you know. Obviously, I've mentioned a couple of names, but talk to me about them. Like, what have they been like? Uh, so, it's been really easy for me to coach um, and teach because I feel like a lot of teams and people get that that part wrong. Um, mm. Coaching and teaching aren't the same thing. No. You can X and you can X and O. You can you can kind of game game day be able to coach a team, but if you don't know how to man manage, if you don't know how to teach your players to do the things that you want them to do, the rest of it's pointless. You have mm. to it has to be a balance between it all, between kind of helping people um, improve their limitations, but also uh, allowing them to show their show their capabilities. You mm. know what I mean, week to week, and and that might change between depending on who your opponent is and, and how you might feel that week or ha- what kind of week you've had. But mm. what I've tried to install in, in, in the program from the beginning was discipline, discipline mm. within yourself. It, when, once you have the discipline within yourself, then you can bring that discipline to the team and help the team. But if you don't have any discipline for yourself, that we're, we're going to fight a losing battle here. So yeah. the first, the first thing I did was kind of, it's a discipline thing. It, it's not a dictatorship. It's not a dictatorship. I'm not, I'm not an, I'm not a, I'm not going to be an arsehole about things. I'm not going to be on on your ass about certain things, but there's a difference between wrong and right and there's a difference between improving and not improving and it's clear and cut and and it's kind of like I'll use I'll use you to help you improve. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. because um at the end of the day, if you don't see what you need to improve on or see how you're not improving or et cetera, et cetera, you, you just won't. The, yeah. the evidence needs to be there. The facts need yeah. to be there. So when I, that's what we did at the start of the season. And then obviously after that, it's kind of like every, every individual player, how can you help us be better? So we've got a roster of, or a squad of 14. At the end of the day, not all 14 of you can play. Yeah. All 14 of you can play. You, you You're more than... But more than capable. this is you're more than capable of playing yeah. every weekend. Yeah. More than capable of if you went to another team in this country, you'd probably start or play major yeah. minutes. Yeah. But you need to get to you need to get to grips with this guy might be better than me at this. Mm. So that's just what it is. He's gonna yeah. do this and I'm gonna come in and do my part. And I feel like everyone bought into that. And then mm. when when that happened, we just we're, we're the most efficient team in the country in division two. And that's there's a reason behind that. Mm. Um, it's 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 because 
we found how to be a synergy and you know what I mean? We need to equal 10 and it's not two plus two plus two plus two. It might be yeah. one plus five plus yeah. it. Like it, it might just be that, but yeah. every game there's a synergy of how we're going to play and, and, and yeah. how we're going to overcome this win. It might be an inside game. It might be an outside game, it mm. might, whatever game it might be. And every yeah. individual player kind of bought into that. And we've got some some hell of a pl- hell of players, man. Like like you said, Sam Salawashi. We have got um, Kane King, who's who have both played at high level. My brother yeah. Michael Gale played at mm. high level, um, and then other guys that are fringed, um, but also understand the game to a high level. And then we've got begin almost beginners that are hungry for yeah. kind of improving. And I feel yeah. like that is that's been the balance with everything. It's kind of like. No one thinks they're better than anyone else, but yeah. everyone wants to. Imp- everyone wants to improve. Everyone's hungry to improve. Everyone's hungry to make this team better, and I think that's that was one of the major keys that we had this season. I think it's really interesting you mentioned like you, you talk about that because you know the dynamic for for us has been very different. Um, you know we have a real mix of experience and youth. Um, like you, you know we have the same mindset that you know we're all trying to get to ten but it's not always two plus two plus two, but mm. it really showed in the way that we played. <clears throat> you know, mm. we have what, six or seven guys on our team um, averaging between 13 and 15 points a game. We have no one standing out from anyone else. We have what we lead who's hitting free throws at a stupid rate. We have um, Anthony, who's a top 10 rebounder, myself, who's top 10 in efficiency. Everyone's doing bits and pieces to add to the puzzle. If one thing isn't Mm. working, if it's not one person's day, they're like, okay, cool. It's not your day. We move the ball and someone else can have their day. Mm. um, But what's unique is that we don't have like a one-on-one mentality. When you play basketball, the ball's moving, bodies Mm -hmm. are moving. You know, you try to play basketball the right way and yeah. it's just nice. And, you know, with the experience like myself and Waleed and and Corey, guys that know the game. Um, mm-hmm. We also have some youth. We, you know, half, like four or five members of the men's team are all under 18s uh, sure. or just finished playing under 18s basketball. You know, Kane was at Oakland's for a few years. Yeah. Um, Liam Liam Campbell, who's, in my opinion, the best under 18 point guard in the, in, in the country. Just got a call up. You know, he's he's running the show for the team. Um, Afra's young. Um, Moody, Moody and Amar are all young. Hunter should have been MVP at the National Cup for the under 18s game. He like we have really, really good players who are just coming through and you know, performing at a high level. And it's just nice to have that um have that mix of, you know, a hunger from the youth and the call aheads and the experience, you know, guys that have been around, guys like Anthony and myself and yeah, and it's just nice to see. So it's nice to you know hear different perspectives of what dynamics of what the dynamics yeah. have been from the north and the south. Um, my next question for you is obviously you know you've seen the north, but what's I'm gonna obviously reverse the question, but from what you've seen from the south, mm-hmm. whether you've watched games or saw results and everything, mm-hmm. what do you what have you seen from the south that's very different from what the north has been this year? Um, well, obviously, I've been around basketball a very long time now, so I understand what the, the difference has always been between the north and the south. Um, you'll find that the, the game is a lot slower in the north, it's more mm. not more methodical, but it's it, it it's on the path of more methodical, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Running sets most yeah. of the game, yeah. running team defense most of the game, whereas down the south, it's kind of it's it's still a team game, but it's kind of I'm a lock into my man one on one because I don't want you to score first mm. and foremost. And I, the reason why I don't want you to score is because I don't want us to lose. Mm. So it's kind of like and I and the, the the great thing that I've always known that Birmingham has the mix of both. So it has kind of those guys that can switch on and be like, I'm just gonna lock you up. I don't even care mm. about the rest of these. Like I'm just gonna lock you up, and then he's got the rest of the guys, you know. The, the, the shooters or the, the whatevers where you can kind of okay we can run a methodical thing where it's X and O's and yeah. people don't get people don't get lost in it and the IQ's mm. there for it to happen and I've seen I've watched some of the South games and there's some players that don't have great IQ but the effort level mm. it matches do you know what I mean like you yeah. might not be thinking thinking 
great things on the court that I'm, I'm watching. Like, oh my god, why did you do that? But yeah. you made up for it. You made up with it for with a hustle play or an yeah. effort play, and yeah. and that's at the end of the day, it, matchups make games on it. So yeah, you can you can be as X and O's and as methodical as you want, but if a guy just wants it more than you, you might lose this game. Yeah, and I feel like that's what the South brings. Um, don't get me wrong. There's some teams that do run it. Like I've watched, uh, I've watched all the games. I've watched all all the games this season. I've I've been able to, and um, Solent vet look very methodical, but they're young. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Bright- Brighton as well. They started really well. Yeah. But at, at D two level, it's all about commitment. Yeah. It's about can you keep eight nine guys all season locked in every game, home and away. No matter how far it is, no matter mm-hmm. what time it is, can mm-hmm. you keep eight, nine core guys locked yeah. in? And that's the difference between D two and D one. That's yeah. that's what separates teams from D. Because talent wise, I feel like the teams like St Helens, Worcester Wolves, uh, Bristol Hurricanes in our in our side, and then your side, you, yourselves, uh, Brighton, even Ipswich, you guys can compete at, uh, oh, yeah. at D one. Oh of yeah, of course you can. Oh yeah, but can you can you get eight, nine guys committed mm. for? 26 games. Yeah. Nah, it's tough mm. now because man, I got to work. Yeah. Man, gotta, families. Yep. Like, Kids. Man, man yep. getting old. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> all these things come, all these variables come into play. And um, I think that's what, that, that's what separates the, the difference. Um, But yeah, it's been good to see. I, I like what mm. the South brings. It's, it's definitely a different dynamic down there. And um, it'd be interesting to see how these, these, these four games go. Like, yeah. Because yeah. I I can't really call it. I can't say yeah. I see them beating them or them beating it. It's yeah. like oh, I don't know what that matchup will be like when yes. it's, when it's on the fl- on the floor. Because I can watch all the game film on Greenwich. I want, but mm. until I'm actually in the flow of the game, in that feeling, what it's like when you yeah. got a guy talking talking smack all game, yep. or you got a guy, <laughs> you've got you've got a guy yep. fouling or not getting fouls or the refs mm. coming to play. Like until you're actually in in between those four lines. Mm. You can't really say. You can prepare for what you you you're watching, and you can yeah. scout. You can write all the things. This this guy likes to shoot off this hand. This guy likes to dribble off this hand. You can do all of that, but in that game, you won't know that until that whistle blows. Yeah, of so, course, of course, of course, of course. And and honestly, I could vouch for that. The South was an absolute dogfight this year. You know, <laughs> there imagine. were literally six or seven teams. I called it at the beginning of the season. Six or seven teams could have gone on if like gone on to win the league. Um mm. on the last day, um Ipswich had a chance. Um Brighton had a chance. Greenwich had a chance, you know. So it uh, even like Richmond, Richmond lost the most amount of games by two points or less this mm. year. So you know if the chips yeah, yeah, I noticed direction, that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they they'd be in the title hunt, you know. Um so it, absolute dogfight. Next year is about to be even worse because of the teams coming up and the teams going uh, down. Absolutely, it's, down. Uh, absolutely. Look, it's gonna be. I don't want no part of it. I'm just gonna sit my drink and do one and watch all the madness happen. I'm, I'm not even trying to get involved for that. But absolutely, looking at the north, um, from what I saw, I want. I really want to hear what you got to say about about these guys because. Um, you know, you guys just ran away with things really early and everything, and you were yeah, consistent. Yeah. You plugged away, but Saint Helens just did not go away. And it I didn't hear, matter. I didn't hear anything about them. All I know, all I heard about them was, oh, they just come up from Division Three to D Two, just like us. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I no, I didn't hear anything about them until Christmas. When I'm looking at the league table at Christmas, I'm like, hold on, what's going on here? <laughs> so I start paying attention. I start seeing highlights. I start seeing Dizzy play. I start yeah, seeing yeah. all of these people. I'm like, hold on, they've got a setup here. What's going on here? So talk to me about the challenge of of St. Helens. And I'm gonna come to the I'm gonna come to your head to head later. That's the next question. But talk to me about that challenge. Honestly, like I I before the start of the season, I'd watched everyone. I'd watched everyone's previous season. I'd watched, I'd seen this was before I was made head coach. Uh, these are the just things I did. I did this last season when I was at Newcastle. The way I feel about the game, think about the game, observe the game, is just a, a lot different to a lot of other people. I know this because when I ask people, they're like, "Ra, you, you've done that. You know that." I'm mm. like, "Yeah, I know." Or I know all your stats from your entire life. Kind yeah. of thing. These are the kind of stuff yeah. that I'm interested in. Yeah. Like, was this a mistake, or are you? Is this who you really are? Do you know what I yeah. mean? 
Um, yeah. So I did all that, and I knew what St. Helens had. Like, apart from um, Stilo, the uh, guy that played DBL, I didn't really yeah. know much. He'd been kind of out of the loop for a while. But I knew all their players. Like, yeah, man. And then they had the uh, self as well. My boy, David Moyes, his friend. Yeah. So was like, yeah. He, he was like, he's a shooter. Yeah. I'm like, they've got a well-balanced team. They've got a coach yeah. that ca- cares about them. And they all play for each other because they all yeah. like each other. So yeah. you've got to look at these kind of variables. You got, And this is inside information as well. Like if I look at a team list, I don't know if you all like each other. Mm. I don't know whether you all pass to each other because you have to or because you want to. Want to yeah. These are the things, you know what I'm saying? And there's a clear difference. And you can see that when people play. Mm. How How is this going to change the, in the moments of a game? Because when I'm looking at teams like uh, Greenwich or when I'm looking at teams like uh, Leicester Warriors, you're all playing for yourself and you're all passing because mm-hmm. it's almost like you, you, you have to. Not yeah. because you really want to. Want to, to yeah. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? But St. Helens are passing to each other, moving for each other because yeah. they want to. They all they all respect each other's game. They all work out together. They're, it's it's friends. Mm. And it's like, yeah, man, you man are tough. I see you man losing some games, mm. but you man are tough. Yeah. And then it was kind of like, rah, you, you man really don't want to lose any more games. Nah. Like, like nah. you really don't want to lose. Yeah. And then obviously... We we beat them both times. I mean, that second time was. We're gonna talk about that second game because, bro. Yeah, something I don't know what happened because, like, so just to paint a picture, right? That weekend, um, obviously the script was written in a certain way where it's like mirror. You know, we just yeah, come up yeah. from we just come up from D three. We're playing against top of D what D two. They've just come up from D3. They're playing the top yeah. of D1. They needed to beat you by a certain amount to keep themselves in the hunt. We needed to beat um, Brighton by 14 to have head-to-head advantage and have and yeah. do all of that. We beat Brighton by 17 that day. And we're like, mm-hmm. yeah, let's go, let's go. But then Corey, Corey's like, wait, what's happening with the other game? So we immediately look at the stats. And it's what the beginning of the fourth quarter, and you guys are down what 15, 16, 16. something like yeah, 16 points. Well, like, wow. I think it was even worse than that. I think we were down like 20 at some point. Yeah, like, it, the I'm game like, was like, oh my day. We're looking at it like, what's going on? So we don't go home, we don't go home. Corey's like trying to get updates from somebody that's watching the game. We're watching the stats next thing you know, the score just keeps like. Dropping and dropping like that, they they, they, they stopped they, like for the lot. Like there was a five six minute spell where they couldn't put the ball in the basket, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah. is going on? And then you start going off like a crazy person. I don't know what the hell came over you. You're like, nah, we're not losing today, and, and, and I'm just like, what is happening right now? But just, it, it was, just talk to me for it. Talk, talk me for it. Just talk me for it. I mean, the video that one of our guys he does like editing online and all of that stuff. So he makes like games highlight kind of reels after every game, and I still watch the one he made from that game like often. And I watched the Saint Helens game the other day. Like this is what I do in my spare time. I'll just watch mm-hmm. game film, and I I'll, I'll watch something different every time. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm noticing this time this guy did this and this movement here, and I'm mm. like. But honestly, in that fourth, it was like the third quarter, third, fourth quarter. I'm looking around. I'm like, I'm the coach. I'm one of the best players. Like, if we, if we lose this, it's all on me. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, damn. And then I'm like, the score is like, we're down like 20 at some point. Oh, in the, man. Third. the game's just running away. I'm looking up at I'm, And that was the first time this season I actually feared losing. I was like, oh damn, we're going to yeah. lose this game. And not only are we going to lose this game, we're going to lose the head-to-head. Yep. It's, gonna, it's, it's just all going to come crumbling down right oh, now. Man. And I was like, you know, at first, the first thing I did, I was like, I have to get this head-to-head. No yeah. matter what, if we lose this game, fair enough. Yeah. But I ain't going out like this. Like, yeah. if you man win, cool. Cool. You can take the two-point win. You can take a four-point win. Yeah, you can take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the head-to-head, I have to take that. It, it, yeah. it has to be mine. So then I was, I just took that up on and then we just started we just I don't know, I don't know. And then that was the you, game. You I tore my mad. I tore my menisc I tore my meniscus in that game in the first five minutes. And like, yeah, but not not many people this is why I took them I was out for the next four weeks. Like I've had a slight tear in my meniscus in the first five minutes of the game. Like I've watched back the game, I'm like, no way. I I played on that, like my knee swelled up and I was like, I don't I don't even care like I'm gonna die on this court. I'm gonna lose my leg on this court if I have to. But yeah, wow. fourth quarter, 
I just started hitting some shots and I was like, you know what, we can. And then the last like three minutes, they just didn't score for like they six couldn't. minutes. They could not. They and I'm, I was like, looking we, at like what the hell was going on? And you're telling me you're the, and you played one leg. That's one mad. leg, man. But they that's they were mad. tired though. They were that's tired. Mad. Like that's one thing that really helped us. We're we're in the gym. We're in there three nights a week. Mm. We're guys are doing extra. We're, we're fit. Mm. So that fourth quarter, we still have it, and we still have it to give. Mm. Not many teams have it in the fourth quarter. You can you can make shots, but are you going to keep that efficiency? We're the same all the way through the game. Like we we yeah. So we're fit, and we've been fit from the beginning of the season. People have caught up now, so it's not we're not as far ahead as we were in the I first just, eleven yeah. games. Yeah. Obviously, the season's done now, but we like people did catch up, and and like we did have a few scary moments, but mm. I feel. It, but yeah, that game, yeah, it just had to get done. And then yeah. the last two minutes, when I was like, "Whoa, we're, we're actually close." Yeah. And then it was like, I was like, "Oh, we're level." I'm like, "Okay, if if, if this goes overtime, we got this." But, yeah. They're in, they're in foul trouble. Guys are fouled. I'm like, and then they and they were like, "We're up." And it's like, "Yeah, this game's done." Yeah, this we're, game's we're, over. This, <laughs> yeah, this game's over with now. <laughs> like they scored. I think it was two points in the last six minutes. Yes, two points Madness. in the last six. They minutes. scored eight points in the whole quarter. It was ridiculous. So, We're watching so yeah, this, we, thinking this is this is madness. This is, and they're telling me you did it in one leg. I'm like, nah, this is crazy, crazy. No, nah, it was crazy. crazy. Like it was. I can talk about that now because obviously the season's done and and everyone's healthy. And but yeah, man, it was it was it's been real. The journey's been yeah. It's it's been real, man. I, can't, I mean, yeah. it's a, it's the it's a it's a champion's character, you know. Teams that I, don't want like. One thing that people don't know about London Elite in Division 2 this year, we have the most cutback victories this season yeah. over everybody, anyone. So we've had nine games where we've been down by 15 or more. Wow. Um, and we've come back and we've taken the lead and we've won games over and over and over and over again. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's just that resilience, man. It's we that just, will. I we're like a cockroach. Lose. Exactly. We're like a cockroach. You just can't lose. get rid of us. We just don't know how mm. to die, you know? And I loved, I loved yeah. that. So when I hear yeah. when I hear you guys doing that, I'm like, yeah, you guys, you guys were going to win the league. When mm. I saw that, I'm like, yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap after yeah. that, you know. I mean, the games, the games that preceded that were, were tough games. Don't get it wrong. Like that Worcester game was again very tough at their mm. place. Like they, <laughs> their crowd, their crowd really had them going. Really had them going. A, th- a thousand fans screaming. But I feel like just, just a little, few moments of brilliance kind of took took us over the edge in that game. Uh, mm. Bristol, we went overtime with Leicester Warriors. I was never in fear of losing that game, but we could have yeah. lost either way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. a few things swayed either way like when you get into and I didn't play that game so I had to I had to coach it um, but yeah man we've, we've been good man and even the game we lost like we were down 15, 16 and like we're guys back. were out injured and, and we tried to bring it back I mean we didn't get the win that we wanted but I feel like for us that was the best loss that we could have had this season mm. like the, mm. it, it reminded us it grounded us it, 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 it changed some stuff for me brought back the discipline that we had in the first first yeah. half of the season and, yeah. and kind of improving on the things that we need to and finding, you know, what's our best punch and, and going with yeah. our best punch all the time. Yeah. And then we showed we showed good signs of that in the, 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 the Bristol Flyers game after that. And then mm. practice has just been amazing since. So I'm really hopeful for this playoff season that we can yeah. really achieve what we're, what we're set out to achieve. So, and I know it must be the same for you guys. I mean, it ever. definitely is. It definitely is. I mean, we had a goal at the start of the year to win the league when no one else believed in us and now we've done that this is like let's make a statement now we've mm-hmm. achieved our goal let's make a statement um so let's 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 talk about the playoffs now because i want to i want to get into the matchups and you guys have greenwich you guys are the one seed congrats for that undefeated mm-hmm. season well, almost an undefeated season um mm-hmm. so you know you guys got a one seed well deserved but you guys got greenwich that's gonna be I don't know just from a just from a personal perspective, they're one of the two teams that did the double on us. First mm-hmm. one they beat us at home, buzzer beat a three. Second yeah, yeah, yeah. one Cra- second crazy one. call crazy call though. Oh oh my god. Oh my they god. They should have never you know, had the timeout in the first place. <sighs> Look, 
it is what it is. We we live so, and we learn. That, that, I have it, seen the game. Yeah, but in it the, was. It in was. the game where you beat when you beat them in the cup, it was a very similar game, but you had the control. Yeah, we had the control. Yeah, we had the control. But um, so, when we played them at their place, they they deserved the win. They were gritty. They were. They did all of the all the dark. It was all of the dark arts of basketball. Oh, we're mm. gonna move the venue last minute. We're mm. gonna give you a shitty call. We're gonna make it mm. intimidating. We're only gonna give you ten minutes to warm up. We're gonna do all mm. of these things. Mm. All the mind games. Us, all of the mind games, and it hit. They hurt us. They were they were more physical than us. They were stronger than us on the day. No one really hit shots, but they took advantage of you know real South London referees and stuff. So <laughs> it's one of those yeah. ones there. So like, what do what do you expect from that game? Um, like you said, I, I, I know all of these things. I've, I've been around basketball enough. I know what the South brings. And mm. I, the, the thing about uh, when you played them both times, I know that game was more than just who's on this paper. Because yeah. when you have teams that are from London v. London, it's always a different game. It's nothing to do with X and O's or what, who's better on paper or am I better than you. It's all about the street cred it's all about the the kind of personal vendettas that you have it's you history guys it's history i used, I used to, to play to, for them i used to, exactly you've got all of these things involved yeah. these are, this is inside information yeah. that only you two teams know yes. but i understand it because i get it in birmingham as well when two yeah. teams are playing and it's like how did that team beat that team it's like because the emotions got the better of them this yep. team was you know what i'm saying and yep. i understand that so i've watched i've watched all of their games that i can online and mm. I know what they're good. I know what they're good at. I know their capabilities. I know their limitations. I know yeah. their limitations are masked by kind of this this bravado, this this kind of facade of you yeah. know, talking behind, yeah. talking behind, yeah. talking, yeah. talking, talking. It, it's fine. You can talk all you want, but like I've said to my guys, we're out of your league. Mm-hmm. And in the most respectful way, we're gonna we're always respectful, but we're out of your league. We're in Division One now. Like it, that's 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 the journey we're on. We're out of your league. So the talking that I'm and we're not on your level. We're the most efficient team in the league. We're not on your level. So on any level that you want to talk to me, if this is a personal thing, I've done more than you. Mm. It, it, so it, there's nothing you can say. And then on the game, on let let the game do the talking. And it whoever wins wins, but let the game do the talking because this kind of talking you won't get away with it in the north anyway there'll be technical yeah. fouls thrown left right yeah. and center and yeah. as a coach i'm not playing into that i i don't want yeah. my guys to be like yeah man let's match let's match it <laughs> yeah no, let's not yeah don't get like, suckered into that that's their game not, they win if they, if they do, that. do you know what i'm saying yeah. that that's that's what they that's their edge they have to pick a poison and that's the poison they want to go with fine mm. that's cool like on every level, they don't rebound better than us. They don't shoot better than us. They have no inside present better than us. Mm. Uh, they don't defend better than us. They don't steal mm. the ball better than us. And that was it. so on every level of basketball, we should win. Of course, but if we play, if we play into their hands of of kind of a pissing contest per se, yeah, anyone could win that. Anyone on can the win. day, anyone can win that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? So. Of like I've done as as much as I can as a coach, as a player, to kind of prepare myself for what they may bring or what they might may do as a basketball. And yeah. you got to prepare yourself for the kind of the talk that yeah. that Robert's going to come with. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like we've yeah. all yeah. we all identified who's going to be doing the most like, talking. <laughs> so, uh, but like I, I I've said to the guys this season, I have your back unconditionally mm. it, between these four lines there's nothing no one can say to you that will that I can't match or escalate yeah. further yeah. and and that's that's as as a player as a person like I will not be allowed I will not allow any disrespect to go on 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 um unpoliced do you course. know what I mean at the end of the day the, the the referees are there to kind of to control the game but if it gets out of hand I've told my players I have your back unconditionally mm. unconditionally this is this 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 ain't no Mickey Mouse. This is no child stuff. Like this is this is serious. If you want to take this out of basketball, then we can. If you really want to, mm. like I'm looking forward to that game to see what Greenwich are like away from home, mate. Such a fortress like mm. yours. But let's mm. just make it quick because we've only got like four minutes left before this thing decides yeah, that's what fine. I need to do. Um, obviously, I got Bristol Hurricanes. And I'm looking at that game and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the challenge. I know my matchup. So 
I'm looking for. Who are you matching up? Who are you going for Mantis or are you going with a dozy? No, 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 no. Mantis, like the thing, the thing, the thing with um how we how what we think, they will have the best player on the court. We'll have who? the second, we'll have the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth best player. Who who's the best player on the floor? I feel like if Daniel really decided he don't want to take no prisoners. Obviously, we can slow him down. That's not a problem. But he's not the be-all and end-all of that team. Obviously, I've seen what other guys can do and everything like that. So, but... so you don't you don't think Bill Mantis is the best player? No. Bill Mantis is the best player in Division 2, fam? I disagree. I feel like we have enough to take care of him. I disagree. I, I mean... If, if, we're, okay. if, we're just, if we're just talking about... If we're just talking about the effect of the matchup, he might be the best player in the league. If we're talking about what the matchup looks like, if we're talking yeah, about the yeah, matchup, yeah. then yeah. yeah Daniel, yeah, yeah. Daniel would be really, really effective on the day with regards to matchup. Yeah. But the others around him, I thought we could take care of him just because we match up better. You know, and um, it will be interesting. You might disagree. Yes, this, no, 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 might no, be, no. This might I, be my I south. This might be my south side talking, but no, no, no. This is this is the realist side of it talking now. Because obviously, I'm impartial to both sides. I got friends yeah. on on Bristol Hurricanes. On I got sides, friends yeah. on on both sides. So it's not a case of yeah. It's kind of Bill Mantis is the best basketball player in. This oh yeah. Country. Oh, he's he's you know a very he's like, a very good you, player. If he you is. look at the things that he can do, and you don't really <laughs> notice it or understand it until you're actually on the floor with it. Yeah. Like you can, you can look at it in film all you want and then it yeah. looks like this and it, and he's doing this, he's doing that. Like yeah. he's a six, he's a six, nine stretch for that play. Of course. League. Of course. That's, of course. Like, do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. Idozi is very effective and very yeah. dominant in the things that he does. But as a basketball player, Bill Mantis is one of the oh. best in the country. Right? So that, I agree. That neither hero there. Um, I feel the matchups are in your favor. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, yeah. I feel your matchup with Sam Sanders really well um, yeah. with Liam Liam Campbell. That's a real yeah. good matchup. I think what you do as a four five man, they will not be able to handle. Mm. But a lot of different variables come into play because if you get into foul trouble, which is what yeah, they will which do, is what they will do, yeah, yeah, then it, it's a different yeah. game. So it's all well and good talking about it at everyone at their peak performance of performance. Course. But if if you get a couple of fouls in the first ten minutes. It's a different game. It's a different game, of course. So you know what I mean. So what you thinking? Like, ignore the fact that I'm here because we've got like a minute left. Elite yeah. or Bristol? Which way are you going? I got you guys. I got you I guys. Come. All right, cool. cool yeah, cool. yeah, I got you guys definitely. Now the other two games, let's just play quick fire because I know what my answer is for the other for the other two. Ooh. Brighton, 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 Worcester. I got, I got Brighton, Worcester. I'm gonna go bright. I'm gonna go Brighton simply mm. because Worcester aren't. Fantastic away from home. I agree. That would have been my pick. Um, I feel yeah. like Brighton play a decent brand of basketball that will take them over yeah. the edge. And yeah. St. Helens, Ipswich, Saint, as much as Saint I Helens. love Ipswich, St. Helens are winning that game. St. Helens. Helens are winning that game. But my guy, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely, man. Anytime. Hopefully we chop it up again before the semis. Absolutely. Yeah. Handle Greenwich for me. I will hold, I would love it personally if you did. And let's no just keep it moving, innit? Yeah? See you in the fight. Right. Love, my bro. Love, man. Take care, champ. Late. See you later, champ. <laughs>